Raffles by E. W. Hornung, a series of short stories dramatized for radio by Alwyn Wymark, with Jeremy Clyde as Raffles and Michael Cochran as Bunny. The Knees of the Gods I know what you're thinking, Bunny. I doubt if you do, AJ. I do. And you've got to stop it, my dear old rabbit. Perhaps we won't ever see England again, or perhaps we will. It's on the knees of the gods. The last week of January, and we were setting out for Cape Town to volunteer for the war. In the early weeks of autumn, we had taken disgracefully little interest in the goings-on in South Africa pursuing instead our profitable nocturnal forays into prosperous suburbs of the Thames Valley. Even the ultimatum excited less interest from us than it did from our unexpectedly bellicose landlady, Mrs Fisher. I don't know who they think they are, laying down the law to Her Majesty and the <laughs> British Empire. And when war was actually declared, her rage against those wild boars, as she called them, knew no bounds. I should have every hair of his beard pulled out. Who's that, Mrs Fisher? That's um, General Smut. <laughs> if I got hold of him, <laughs> I'd put him in a cage and make him dance for his dinner like a bear. <laughs> we were amused by Mrs Fisher's patriotic fervour, but it wasn't until one morning in Richmond that our own was finally awakened. I was thinking we might have a look round Wimbledon. Rather a long way out for us, isn't it? Good enough pickings to make it worth the journey, I'd wager. Oh. Hang on, buddy. Hold my bike, will you? Post, please. this. In less than three hours, the Transvalers were routed. General French's lancers were pursuing their retreat and inflicting bloody punishment. Even so, British casualties were high, and though an official victory, the Battle of... Oh, Mrs Fisher's quite right, very peculiar names. Elans Lagter. Where, where's that, Bunny? No idea, old man. We must get a map. From that moment, we became enthusiastic war strategists. Every day we bought a sheaf of newspapers and marked up all the battles on our map with flags. We were soon the fiercest of far-side fire-eaters. Why in God's name does General Buller persist in these frontal attacks? Exactly. Now, what's needed, Bunny, is to move at least three regiments straight down this route and cut the boar off at Dundee. Uh, but then they could head up along here towards Pretoria. Yes. Well, at any rate, it'll be over for Christmas. Well, bound to be. And then came December and Black Week. Dear heaven, buddy. Three battles lost in less than a week. Complete British surrender at Margus Fontaine, Colenso and Stormback. Terrible. But shameful. All three, neck and crop, neck and crop. Have you seen the lists, Bunny? Huh? Six of our own schoolfellows fallen. I envy them. The next day, he was out early on his bicycle. There you are, AJ. Where have you been? I've taken the bottle, Bunny. Have a look. Huh? Ladies' high fashion hair dye. Dye for my country. Dulce et decorum est, Bunny, my boy. What on earth do you... You're going to the front? If they'll have me. What do you think, Bunny? I think it great of you. Oh, dear old rabbit. Who knows? I may not come back. No, no, don't say that. Of course you will. What for, Bunny? Well, I don't mean to let you go alone, you know. We'll sign on with the Imperial Yeomanry. Oh, what am I thinking of? They'd never have me, a branded jailbird. Oh, they'd never have either of us. My God, Bunny, even to think of it. We might as well offer our services to the Metropolitan Police. No, no, no. We go out to the Cape on our own. That's where we enlist. They won't even ask to see our birthmarks there. Oh, 
Mr. Ralph, what have you done? You, you, you've gone ginger. When she found out the reason for the transformation, the good Mrs. Fisher was inconsolable at first. Well, I must be selfish. How could I think you'd do anything else? It's just like you to go off to fight for queen and country like the dear, brave gentleman you are. Oh, not well, brave, really. Oh, brave, I say. Who else would go out on bicycles in the dead of night hunting dangerous burglars? Who oh, indeed, Mrs. Fisher? Mm. Yes. <laughs> And now, here we were on the deck of the SS Union Castle, watching the shores of England recede into the mist. One of those regiments of irregular horse is the thing for us, man, eh? Horse? Raffles, I don't ride. Well, they say one man in the saddle out there is worth ten foot soldiers. All volunteers over here! Volunteers to sign up here! Names? Jack Ralph. Bertram Magister. Both experienced riders? Yes, sir. Well, actually, I... Uh, yes, sir. Very experienced. I did improve, but I suffered some painful posterior bruising in the service of my country. And a good deal of ridicule from the squadron we joined. Raffles was the darling devil of them all, but never more loyally my friend. Oh, look out, Bertie! Poor sniper! <laughs> what? Where? Over there! No! What? He's over there! Oh, he's behind you, Bertie! He'll get you in the bum! <laughs> Leave him alone, chaps. Yeah. Only fooling about, Jack. <laughs> Thanks to Raffles, I was soon accepted by most of the men as a sort of comic mascot, but not by Corporal Connell. He was a great hulking Irish ruffian who had singled me out for villainous bullying from the hour I joined. Corporal Connell? I say, Corporal. What do you want? Any more saddle wax? No. Oh, very helpful. Well, he's not that fond of you, Bertie. No, he's not. Oh, by Jove, it's hot. Well, by Jove, it ought to be, Bertie. It's the middle of summer out here, you know. I can't get used to it. The end of February. Astonishing. Oh, absolutely astonishing, old boy. Ha, ha. Are you coming? Yes, when I finish with this. Hey, look out. Connell's coming over. You'd better run for it, Bertie. I wouldn't dream of you. <laughs> Good old Bertie. Yeah, cheerio. Cheerio. Take that back, Manchester. What do you mean? Think I didn't hear what you called me? I assure you, I didn't call you anything at all. You're a bloody liar, you bloody stock-up English snob. Put up your fists. Right. I went down like an ox, and Raffles came out of his tent. Time for fisticuffs, eh, Connor? Oh, you want to join your friend, do you? Right. Their fight lasted 20 minutes, and Raffles didn't emerge unscathed. But at the end of it, the bully was a bully no more. Not long after that, the whole regiment was assembled for an announcement from our commanding officer. Silence for the general! Men, I have some good news. Yesterday afternoon, General Roberts marched into Bloemfontein. Bloemfontein has fallen. Yes! 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 The beginning of the end, eh? Well, there's still plenty of mopping up to be done, Bunny. There was indeed. Every day saw an engagement from skirmish to full-scale attack. It was at about this time that I began to suspect Corporal Connell of being something worse than a bully. Raffles, that villain Connell isn't even trying to hit the enemy. Look, can you see? He's aiming high every time. Head down, buddy. But a day or so later, a more glaring incident occurred. 
One morning very early, our troop was detailed to join the rest of our squadron, who'd moved to an advanced post. It was Corporal Connell who led us, our only other officer having gone into the field hospital with enteric fever. What's our direction, do you know? Due east, Bertie. Why? I thought so. Well, what the devil does Connell think he's doing? The patrol reported a big Boer presence in the east. By God, you're right, Bertie. What do you think, Jack? Did Connell get the instructions this morning, or did we? Give the devil a chance. Yes, but don't you think this is... I don't think, my dear chap. I just obey orders. I was taken aback by Raffles' lofty tone and felt quite hurt. We rode on in silence. Hang on. What's that ahead? Where? I can't see anything. All right. It's a white flag by all the gods. Corporal Connell! Flag of truce approaching. You're imagining things. No, no, it's not. No, 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 yeah, there. It's the white no, flag over there. Company! Halt! In a few moments, a shaggy young boar was in our midst. The brim of his hat turned up, his bandoliers crossed over his chest, and a look of complete incredulity on his face. What's your business, and where are you heading? I'm taking the wounded list to your command. Right. Pass on. Oi! Where have you come from? Yeah, where's your eyes, mate? Where are you coming from? Find out right for yourselves! <laughs> Company! Forward! Yeah, but no, 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 talking no, no. as we yeah, go, no, and that's an order. But we must be headed straight for the ball line. Be patient. Just be patient and leave it all up to Connell. I simply couldn't understand him, and I was proved absolutely right. Within an hour, we were actually within sight of the Boer lines. Had not every man of us, except Connell, refused to budge another inch, we would have been done for. We rode like fury back to our own lines, and that night in Raffles' tent I did not mince words. I told you again and again, but you wouldn't listen. And now he's been bloody well led off by the CO. It's an outrage. Connell's no fool. He persuaded the general that the officer muddled up the orders because of his fever. How many times must I say the man is a spy? Not so loud, Bunny. Of course he is. And I can prove it. What? I suspected it from when we joined the squadron, but this morning I must say I thought we had him on toast. Oh, so that's why... That's were... why, Bunny. The enough rope theory. But clearly there hasn't been quite enough rope yet. He should be shot like a dog for this. So he should. But I don't regret it as much as you do. Frankly, I'm keen on bowling him out unaided, though I may ask you to keep wicket. In the meantime, Bunny, don't wear your animosity on your sleeve. We must wait our moment. It was a long wait. In the days that followed, our squadron's task was to capture the pockets of territory still held by commando units in the eastern hills. During this time, two events occurred, one very odd and the other disastrous. The first was that Corporal Connell got his thumb shot off. The other came a few days after. We'd taken a small village between the railway line and the river. Raffles and I were searching in the cellars of a large house. Whoever owned this place also owned a first-rate pallet. Look at this malt. Huh? Long John Ben Nevis. You can scarcely get it in London now. Here, we'll take one each. Uh, I, I can't fit any more under my jacket. Oh, leave one of the bottles of port, then. Oh, pity. What a vintage. Raffles? Hmm? Isn't this looting? Well, looked at one way, it might be, Bunny. But I prefer to think of it as an opportunity for us to brush up on our professional craft. We'd better be off. Uh, through this window here. Blast! What is it? Oh, there's an officer coming. Don't walk too fast and try not to clink. Oh, my God, it's Peter Bellingham. I play with him at Lord's. Get in front of me, Bunny. Just a quick salute and on. Evening, sir. Sir. Evening. Wait a minute. Just hang on a minute. Uh, sir? What the devil have you two been doing? Nothing, sir. Is that so? Let's have a look at that nothing, shall we? 
Whatever's under your jacket's laid out here. Uh, yes. Oh, Long John of Ben Nevis. By God, it's been some time. <clears throat> what are your names? You? Magister, sir. And you? Stand up straight, man. I can't see your face. Sir. Poor Lord. I thought you were dead. And now you see I'm not. The army makes good cover for your old games, I see. Not true. I know you're thinking the wrong and will out, aren't you, Peter? I beg your pardon, sir. But he isn't let out on the field. We're playing the game as much as you, sir. This is the fellow who was taken when you swam for it? It is, and I can vouch for him. He's as brave a man in battle as any in our squadron. Is he indeed? Begad, 1870, this port. Now, this is a serious case. I shall have to go into it with some care. My tent's the fifth one down from the depot. Report to me there in 15 minutes. Sir. Sir. Oh, and uh, bring the evidence. No, no, Palmer was clean bold, don't you remember? I always said he was a homeless bat. But he was a good, fast bowler, Peter. He got six of them out in that same match, You're remember? right, old chap, yes. absolutely right. To Palmer. To Palmer. <laughs> to Palmer. Oh, Bunny, your glass is empty. Um, uh, we should be getting back, Raffles. It's getting what very about that late. Northampton oh. match, eh, Raffles? 85, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. By Jove, it was only in the last hour we pulled it off. Have my word, won't mention it to the CEO or anybody else. Very good of you, Peter. <laughs> Quite sure you won't have this other bottle of the malt? No, keep it, keep it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, yes, good night. Do you know, he didn't address a single word to me the whole time. Not one. Take no notice, Bunny. He always was a frightful snob. <laughs> hey, you! That looked like Connell. Did it? Yeah. I saw the bandage on his hand. Do you think he was following us? Though Connell's right thumb was supposed to have been shot off in a recent skirmish, no one actually saw it happen, and I wasn't the only one convinced it was self-inflicted. However, he got away with it. He was put in charge of our horses and excused from action. Taken back from the lines. There's not enough cover for them here. You, sir, and you. Me? Yes, you. Take them down to Connell in the ravine. As we galloped down the hill, a shell burst almost on top of us. The man next to me was hit. The whole back of his head was blown off. He and his horses fell together in a tangled, screaming mass. I managed to get my horses to the ravine and left them with Connell. Then I half walked, half crawled back up the hill. It was getting dark. For once, the discomfort in the trenches was no bar to slumber. I was exhausted, numbed and emptied out by horror. I slept, soon and heavily. Mm. Wake up, Bunny. Mm. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Only me. Oh, oh, Raffles. Oh, awful dreams. What time is it? I don't know, about three, probably. If here's something to take your mind off your nightmares. I think we can nab your friend this very night. Huh? Uh, Connell? Yes. You know those three horses that disappeared yesterday? Uh -huh. He let them go himself. No. Uh -huh. Sent them over to the Boer trenches, I'm sure of it. He simply chased them out during the night. The blacker. And he's got the rest of the horses down in that ravine. There's only one man on watch with him, and if he does it again, we're going to see it happen. Are you coming? Yes. <sighs> yes, of course I am. Good man. Well, follow me. Well, and keep right down. Yeah. We're a perfect target for snipers in this moonlight.
Can you see him? Over there. Can't see the other man. There, there, look. We're right down at the far end of the ravine. Oh, yes. The sound asleep. You can be sure Connell told him not to bother keeping awake. Oh, yes. <laughs> Go on, Bunny. I'll do the first watch. We'll do turn and turn about. I needed no further prompting, but curled up like a hedgehog and drifted into a thankfully dreamless sleep. It seemed only five minutes later that I woke to a shake from Raffles. Look, huh? You ready? All right. I can't see what he's done with his rifle, but he mustn't have a second's time to reach it. You take his left arm and hang on like a ferret. I'll do the rest. Now, Bunny. <coughs> what the devil are you... Not a sound, Connell. Before you get a bullet through your neck. Who are you? Shut what up. You... Come on. No. <coughs> Go on, me, will you? What's going on? Who's there? Ralph and Manchester. Uh, we're taking Connell to the CO. Stay on guard there. To my surprise, Connell at once stopped resisting us. We no longer had to pull and drag him. I suddenly realised he was laughing. <laughs> What's so funny, Connell? <laughs> I don't think you'll be telling the CO anything at all about me, you know. You're wrong. Wait now, just stop for a minute, will ya? Now then, it'll be me doing the talk and not you. Telling the CO who you are, Mr. Raffles. My God. Oh, yes. And you too, little bunny manders. I heard you all in the captain's tent last night. So bloody let me go and be quick about it. From now on, you two will be doing what I say. Oh, let me go. I'll see you damned first. Oh, then you're damned and done for yourself, cocky. They'll send you home to prison and you'll get 14 years. Think you like that? Oh, God, let go of my arm. I shall have the pleasure of hearing you shot first. Uh, and that alone will make prison bearable. What? Come on, Bunny. But Raffles, uh, I said, come on. Uh, uh, drag the swine along. Let's get this over. I, I, you're mad, you bloody stupid fools. Uh, let me go. Let go of me, you bastards! Let me go! Are you mad? If your story is true, he'll be executed. Is there any truth in his story? It is perfectly true, sir. The notorious Raffles has been alive all these years, and you are really he? I am, sir. And you are his accomplice, a uh, Manders, is it? Yes, sir. And what are you doing at the front, Mr. Raffles? I'm fighting, sir. Did you know he was going to give you away? Yes, sir. But you thought it worthwhile, did you? I thought it necessary, sir. I see. I shall sift all this. An officer's name was mentioned, and I shall see him myself. Meanwhile, uh, Private Ralph, Private Manchester, you had better go on fighting. The bullet went clean through my thigh, drilling the bone. I went over in a heap. There was no cover. I was completely exposed on the bare hill. The pain began. Connell had been executed that afternoon, and now I waited with a kind of sick weariness for the bullet that would finish me off. Oh, chap. Uh, push with your good leg. Uh, I've got you. That's it. Just over to that rock. Can you see it? Uh, hold up, Bunny. There's oh. a brave fellow. Uh, uh. Oh, it's a pretty poor cover, but it'll do if we keep right down. Now, on your back, Bunny. Let's have a look at that leg. Oh, not bad. Well, it's gone right through. Plenty of blood, though. Where's your pack? Oh, never mind, mine's here. Bandage, bandage. For God's sake, Ravels, you keep down. I'm all right. Charmed life, old chap. There. That should do it. Now, tuck yourself right behind the rock, Bunny. Now then, back to work. I should be able to pick off a good few from here, what do you say? 
We lay there for what seemed like hours under blinding sun and withering fire. Feel equal to a cigarette? Oh, yes, please. Uh, no, 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 uh, that one in the silver paper. Uh, I've hoarded it for this. <laughs> Here's light, and so Bunny takes the Sullivan. <laughs> All honor to the sporting rabbit. Well, I went over like one. <laughs> you did, Bunny, but I would... Wait a bit. There's a grey felt hat, a deep long on. Let's see if I can... No. No luck. Must pitch them up a bit more. Oh, hello. Magazine empty. How goes the Sullivan, Bunny? Uh, Rum to be smoking one on the felt with a hole in your leg. I can't feel the leg anymore, never mind the hole. Uh, oh, Sullivan's doing me good. Do you remember that day in Richmond when we first began to think about the war, Bunny? Uh, I can see the mist rising off the river now, can you? Mm. And that fellow shouting, awful slaughter, awful slaughter. And here we have the thing itself. Can you believe it's only six months ago? Yes. We were slow to catch fire. Mm. Too slow. But when we did, we soon flared up. And then went out? Don't say that, AJ. Oh, only a joke, Bunny. Oh. You'll be all right, I promise you. Probably oh. just a slight distinguished limp. <laughs> there. That's got it. Now, another over at the grey hat. By Jove, though. I believe he's having an over at me. I wish you'd be careful. Oh, my dear Bunny, it's on the knees of the gods. That was nearer. To you? No, to him. <laughs> Time seemed to stop. Pain waves and loss of blood were playing tricks with my senses. Now they were quite dull and my leg alive and throbbing. Now I had no leg at all and every other part of me was tingling. And all around me, the devil's orchestra was playing. The crack of bullets, the thud and crash of shells, men screaming. Yet all I heard was Raffles talking to me. Oh, uh, uh, feeling uh, worse, Bunny? No, 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 I've only closed my eyes. Go on talking. I can't see where that last one pitched. It may have been a wide. <laughs> no. Blast. I can't get this fellow. Still, he hasn't got me yet. Uh, uh. All right, Bunny? All right, AJ. It was I who let you in for this. No, no, I, I'm, I'm glad I came out. <sighs> but you haven't had such a good time as I have, poor old rabbit. I'm grateful to the General for giving me today. Who can tell? Maybe the last. But then I can only say it's the best. <laughs> By Jove. What is it? Got him! Got the hat! Oh, well done. <laughs> oh, hanged if I have. At least if I have, he wasn't in it. Oh. What a crafty cuss. He must have stuck it up on purpose. I wonder if he's sportsman enough to take a hint. Will he show his face if I show mine? <laughs> Bunny. Yes, Ravels? It's not only been the best time I ever had, old Bunny, but I'm not half sure... <laughs> Sure of what I can but guess. The sentence was not finished, and never would be in this world. In The Knees of the Gods, by E.W. Hornung, dramatised for radio by Olwyn Wymark, Jeremy Clyde was A.J. Raffles, and Michael Cochran, Barney Manders. Sean Barrett played Connell, Nicholas Murchie, Keith Trinkle, Peter Gunn and John Webb, the soldiers, Peter Penry Jones, the general, Eric Allen, Bellingham, and Gudrun Yor, Mrs. Fisher. The Raffles theme music was composed by Jim Parker, and the sound balance was by Keith Perrin. The Knees of the Gods was a BBC World Service drama production directed by Gordon House. <laughs>